Hey everyone! So I made an L-shaped desk for one of my sewing friends. The idea is that she can sit with her sewing machine and her serger side by side. I had this set up in one of our earlier homes and I loved it. So Charlie helped me with all of the awkward cuts. First of which was cutting 3 quarter inch oak veneer plywood into two L shapes. The width of each of the L's was 18 inches wide and the longest lengths were 4 feet. So we measured all of that out and used a chalk snap to mark the center. Then we used a table saw to do the majority of the lengths of the cut and then finished it up on the bandsaw. This was rather awkward and tricky since we didn't want the almost free piece to snap off, but it was manageable with two people. So then we moved on to doing the data. This is the first time using our fancy smashing new data setup. It's actually the first data set that we bought and this project moved that purchase to the top of our list. <laughs> we had some tear out after the first pass and then I remembered the tape trick that David over at Make Something mentioned a few weeks ago. So then we went to town taping and dadoing. I gave all of that a sanding and we got ready to glue the structure together. However, the pieces didn't fit into the dados. So, we got the caliper and discovered that the dado set is undersized on purpose for nominal dimension wood. <sighs> like seriously. <sighs> We were 36 thousands off, so then we had to add shims to the data set and figure out the new placements on the fence. I was so sick of small numbers after this. <laughs> Anywho, we also discovered that on one of our tape measures, the little metal part was loose and therefore put this data off by a quarter inch or so. So I ran an insert on the bandsaw and glued that back in so we could cut another dado in the correct location. It's not perfect, but it'll function just fine and luckily it's on the inside of the desk, so no one will ever know about it except for all of the YouTubes that sees this video. <laughs> Our little secret, right? At any rate, so once we got all that worked out, then we glued her up. Getting used to using these clamps is sort of like tapping on your head while rubbing circles on your stomach. <laughs> then I cut strips for the little apron leg holder on thing. Not exactly sure the technical term here, if you couldn't tell. Uh -oh. Then I took all the screws out of the legs, they were bought like that, and I'm not sure how those screws are supposed to accomplish anything, but they definitely weren't sturdy enough for the super duper fancy sewing machines that my friend has. Then we both came up with designs to the little apron leg holder on thing. Once we decided on a design, Charlie cut them out on the bandsaw while I traced the original design to make copies. Then Charlie cut the legs down and I used strips that would secure the legs in place out of some pine. So while I love traditional joiner and having everything fit together like a puzzle, I gave in to screws for this project. I couldn't think of a better way to attach the legs that would be really sturdy. And I mean, it's my first time doing any sort of furniture, so you gotta start somewhere. I'd rather it have been really sturdy than the opposite, so I figured I'd just give in to the screws and move on with life. Then Charlie used the drill press to put a pilot sort of hole into the legs so we could thread these hanger bolts into the hole. As you notice, there's a coarse side and a fine side. The coarse side goes into the leg and then the fine side comes out and that's what you screw the nut into. So to finish up the leg part, Charlie cut a brace with 45 degree edges and drilled a hole in the center. Then I glued up the edges and placed the leg assembly together. Finally, a few staples were placed to hold it while the glue dried. And then it was basically a desk. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Charlie helped me cut some strips from half inch plywood so I could start working on the drawers. I set up a stop block and measured and checked and measured and rechecked and measured and rechecked <laughs> to cut the strips down to size. Once that was done, I had all the drawer fronts and backs as well as the lengths. All of this was out of half inch oak veneer plywood. Then I measured the data with the caliper because I already learned my lesson. <laughs> and did a practice piece. Once everything was confirmed, I used the data setup to add half inch-ish 
rabbets that would connect the drawers. Finally, I added a groove to accept the bottom of the drawer. I did the groove with only the 8th inch outside dado and then a 3 16 and I didn't use the other outside 8th inch. But I also didn't need any tear out and I didn't use any tape either. I've heard that you're not supposed to skip the outside 8th inch dado piece, but it seemed to work just fine. So I don't know. So I learned the difference between a dado and a groove from Richard Nat's recent video. Head on over to there if you didn't realize there was, there was a difference. I honestly thought that dado was just a fancy term for a groove. And so that if people didn't know the term dado, they just called it the groove. Apparently that is not the case. Anyway, Charlie came in from doing tractor work outside and stole my air hose so he could blow all of his sweat off. Then he helped me cut some drawer bottoms from quarter inch plywood. If you're not noticing the pattern, this 4x8 sheet stuff is so awkward without an empty table for myself, but we're too cheap to buy the 4x4 sheets. <laughs> so once all the drawer bottoms were cut, I sanded those down and then glued them up. Yes. We placed some staples in the drawers to hold them while they dried since we don't have that style of clamp yet. So then I saw a stain on the bottom of the desk and then went to painting. Here's the finished desk once everything was painted and the drawers were installed. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. However, there are some things I'd like to point out, just some things that I learned along the way. So the drawer dividers were a cool idea, but some of them I ended up dividing too much when paired with sliders that weren't fully extendable. So luckily I love these dividers removable for customization, thinking she could move them as she pleased, or just move them out of the way so she could get additional stuff in that drawer. Another point is realizing the max drawer length for your drawer slide. And I actually looked at the instructions for these drawer slides, which is unlike myself to look at instructions for anything, but I didn't see a max length listed on there anywhere. So I made the drawer a quarter inch smaller than the opening thinking that that would be enough, but really it needed at least a half inch. So that led to some creative use of our data stack. But all in all, I think it was a great first project and my friend is thrilled with her new setup. I'm glad that she has a better spot now for her sewing time and her machines. Gee whiz, are they super duper fancy. Well, as always, we thank y'all for watching and we hope to catch y'all next time.